Here's a topic that's been discussed over and over and over again. Should companies keep politics out of the workplace? You've got a web software firm called Basecamp asking employees not to discuss politics or partake in activism on company time. Basecamp is following in the footsteps of cryptocurrency firm Coinbase. They're doing the same thing. They're trying to keep politics out of the workplace. Joel Patterson, workplace analyst, joining me now. Joel, should companies, large and small, ban politics in the workplace? That's such a personal decision. I think companies have to decide what's important to them and whether or not they need to take that step. Uh, A lot of companies, they don't have a policy at all, and they don't have an issue with it. And then other ones where maybe they don't have the, the culture in place to be able to support delicate conversations like that, they have to have a policy and make sure that everyone uh, understands it and what the repercussions are if you don't follow it. What what if you follow the simple guideline of nothing good can come out of it? I mean, when you think about politics in the workplace, can anything really good come out of it? You know, (laughs) I guess you could ask that question about politics in general these days. Right, right. right. Uh, (laughs) I don't know. Uh, I I mean, my, my, my inclination is to say no, because you're just creating strife and stress for people. And, you know, specifically to, to Basecap and, and Coinbase, it wasn't just about politics either. They were taking that and, and making it about more in, in, in you know, reviews, the performance, uh, peer performance reviews. They were doing things like banning ter- certain committees. Uh, they even canceled wellness benefits like uh, uh, exercise, um, like it's a, a, to a gym, a membership to a gym, sorry. And, uh, and I don't really understand how those tie but basically what they were doing was saying, all right, everything that doesn't have to do with work, we're kind of doing away with. We're going to put that on the shelf for now, and we're going to focus on nothing but shareholder value, which is different than well how organizations have really transitioned over the last 10, 15 years or so, where it's more about all of the stakeholders and not just the owner of the company. Here's the other thing, too, Joel. If you go back 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, people could talk politics at the workplace and it not get personal. I don't know if that's... I don't know if that's attainable anymore. I mean, everything is so personal when it comes to politics that I don't th- I don't see anything healthy coming out of allowing it in the workplace. Agreed. And, and, you know, you don't even really hear conversations that much. There's more arguments when it comes to politics these days. Yep. So I think if we could get back to where, you know, we we're just sharing an opinion and having a, a water cooler conversation and, and move on from there. But these days, everybody just gets so upset about anything. It's it, it's really better off just leaving it at home. Talking to workplace analyst Joel Patterson right now, the question is, should companies keep politics out of the workplace? Joel, when companies take stance on controversial subjects, does it also pit employee against employee? Yeah, it creates all kinds of issues like that. I mean, it's not it, it's really everyone. When when you've got something that they've been doing for a, you know, a length of time, and all of a sudden everybody says, well, you're not allowed to do that anymore, it's going to put everyone in a little bit of a weird spot. Um, again, that goes back to why it's so important. If you're going to make this stance, Make sure that it's clear and simple to understand because somebody is going to do something that is going to challenge the way the rule is written or what the repercussions of not following the rule are. And you've got to be prepared for that. Otherwise, you're just creating more and more of a problem. And people care, right? I mean, uh, Basecamp, I don't know if you saw this or not, but almost a third of their organization quit or at least announced that they were resigning after they came out with this new policy. So, I mean, when you're a 60-person company and you lose almost 20 people, that's that's not an easy thing to overcome. No, when we talk about companies, too, like we've seen the NFL, a lot of people don't look at the NFL as a company, but it is. It's an $8 billion a year company. And when you see them allow athletes to kneel for the national anthem or you allow them to make stances, the NBA, the same thing, you see ratings decline and everybody wants to say, well, it's different reasons. But, I mean, I talk to enough people to know that people have tuned out of Major League Sports because of a lot of the political issues. And then you see Coke and you see Nike and you see some of these other places get involved. I don't know why anybody who operates a business would want to do that because no matter what side you take, you are alienating potential customers, Joel. You're alienating maybe half of your source of income. Clearly. And they, those companies are rolling the dice. And, you know, you go back to the NFL and, and the, the, um, the NBA and things. I think part of the struggle there was different rules by team too right and there mm-hmm. was no there was nothing consistent around how people are supposed to behave so you know that's the nfl's choice they can do that as well as coke but yeah you're right you're going to upset somebody in this situation so they're rolling the dice and hoping that they're picking the, the side that's going to matter more to their business now whether or not you as a consumer think it's okay for them to make those kind of decisions that's up to you and you can vote with your dollar but uh there's clearly a a especially for larger public organizations there's a move towards being more socially active 
And it seems that some of these smaller organizations, they, they just don't have the, the stomach for it. Yeah, and, and the last uh, you know, opinion I want from you here is basically this. You know, when I take a look at companies, and I'll go back to what I said a little bit ago about how speaking about politics now is so antagonistic, like you can't have a normal conversation. I don't know how that benefits a company. I mean, if I ran a company, I would absolutely take the stand of keeping politics out of the workplace because when you've got people that got to work together, and you get you need a team to reach your ultimate goal. If you've got animosity brewing within that workplace, if you've got somebody hating somebody else because of their political beliefs, there's no way you're going to attain your goal. There's no way you're going to be successful. I mean, you're going to have a toxic work environment. Yeah, the flip side of that is that you want your people developing rapport with each other and, and developing relationships because that is also what makes your culture strong. Uh, but you're right. I mean, how do you how do you make sure that they're having conversations that are uplifting and not those that are just beating people down? Because there's there's always people around the conversation that might be part of it that that are being impacted as well. And you don't even take that into account. So uh, it's it's a it's a dicey situation that we've all been dealing with for over a year now. No doubt about it. Joel, thanks for your time today. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. Joel Patterson, workplace analyst.